Who wants to hear a random, long, rambly story about my childhood? Well, I do. So when I was a wee lad, I was absolutely obsessed with tiny green plastic army men. Pretty much every store I went in, especially dollar stores, I looked for them, and if they had them, I almost definitely bought a pack. I had quite the collection. And although I loved hunting them down and buying and collecting all sorts of different types of guys and adding to my ranks, deep down inside, 10-year-old Ridge was never satisfied. And that's because more than anything, I wanted to design and make my own army men. It was kind of like a life goal at the time. But 10-year-old me sucked at making stuff, so I just settled for painting a few. Here's one of the ones I painted, and a kind of weird story, but I've been using it as my Monopoly game piece ever since. Shortly after painting this guy, I played a game of Monopoly, but when choosing the pieces, I was like, all these pieces are boring, but you know what's not boring? That army man I painted the other day. And so I've been using him as my Monopoly game piece for like every single game ever since I was 10 years old. Oh, wow, that story sucked. And so finally, that brings us to today's video. I thought it'd be super cool if I fulfilled my childhood dream of designing and making my own custom army men, while at the same time updating my Monopoly game piece with a cooler, better painted version. No offense. I fully realize that that backstory and just this whole concept in general is just like the weirdest thing, but hold on, stick with me. I think this might actually turn out to be pretty cool. So let's begin. I designed this in FreeCAD, and I'm not going to lie, I've never designed anything quite like this before, so I was really out of my element. All the other things I've built have been a lot more mechanical, and I needed this to look obviously a lot more human. I'm going to save you from having to watch the whole design process because it's super boring, but basically after hours of work, I ended up with this guy. As I hope you can tell, I decided to go with more of a space soldier type figure, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. He's wearing a gas mask so he can enter other planets' atmospheres and kick those aliens' butts. He has a futuristic weapon, and I know he does look a little chunky here, but the thing is my display isn't quite one for one, and he does print a little bit thinner and a little bit more human-like, if you will. But anywho, now that I'm happy with everything, all that's really left to add to him is a base plate, and then we can get him prepped for printing. With the large moon boots I gave this guy, he can actually stand on his own without a base plate, but obviously this just makes it that much more stable. And plus, I tried to make the base plate as small as possible so it's not distracting and doesn't take away from the figure himself. So now, all I'm gonna do is just slice this character into two pieces side by side like this. And of course I'm doing this so they print easier. I tried printing it as one solid piece with supports and all sorts of different things and just me personally I feel like this is by far the best method. So I'm going to go ahead and export these two pieces, put it in my printer, and let's see what we get. Oh, and real quick note about the slicer. <laughs> this film quality is amazing. I printed my guys at 90% because they just seemed a little bit too large at 100, but maybe that's just me. ended up printing really nicely. I really like the detail they came out with and they already match up beautifully. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some Loctite super glue and super glue these two halves together. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, lining these guys up to glue them can be quite difficult, but luckily, praise the Lord, look at that. That is almost perfect. You can't get too much better than that. At least I can't. So now with the two halves glued together, I'm gonna go ahead and take some fine grit sandpaper and just lightly sand down a few of the imperfections to help get the piece prepped for painting.
There we go, very nice. Now you can still see the line where the two halves met a little bit. However, the paint should help cover that up, so I'm not too worried about it. And I'm so sorry, I know it's hard to see this guy at all, let alone some of the details, because he's just so white, the camera is having difficulty focusing on him. However, we're gonna change that right now because it is painting time. Here I have about $20 worth of Hobby Lobby model paints and about $3.99 worth of brushes. So after we open these things up, it's painting time. Now, I'm not 100% sure what direction I want to go with this guy, because I want him to be dark and ominous like a space soldier should be, but at the same time, I want him to be colorful so he's fun to look at. Quite the conundrum we find ourselves in. So I guess what I'm gonna do is just go wild, do whatever I wanna do in the heat of the moment, and if I don't end up liking it, I'll just print another one and try again. <laughs> okay, so I took the liberty of painting four different soldiers, four different color schemes, and now I have no idea which one to choose. Jungle Man. Space Trooper. Blue Boy. Red Pepper. working on this I got what I think is a pretty funny idea you know how like the professional bowlers will have the bags they carry their bowling balls in and the professional pool players will carry around their custom pool cues is it that they'll carry around in those like oak boxes that look real official well what if we did the same thing we made a little tiny oak wood carrying case to carry one of these game pieces around to and from Monopoly games like a match, I'm going to my friend's house to play Monopoly and I show up taking it super seriously with a little custom carrying case, my own homemade game piece, and I'm just ready to destroy them at Monopoly. That is so stupid, but that makes me laugh. Granted, for that situation to work, I'd have to have friends. And those friends who are also seemingly adults would have to want to play Monopoly. Nah, I'll figure all that out later. So let's go make an official looking Monopoly piece carrying case. I'm gonna make a pretty simple box, so I just went ahead and cut off one strip of oak wood that is a quarter inch by three quarters inch wide. I then repeated the process, only this piece was two inches wide. After that, I then cut three two inch long pieces out of a skinny piece of oak and two two and a half inch long pieces out of a chunky piece of oak. And we are left with this. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the back piece and just drop a short, fat, chunky little metal screw right into the center of it. I put a little bit of electrical tape on my drill bit to of course set depth to make sure I didn't poke through the back of the drawer because that would look super ghetto. Ah, lovely. With that, I'm going to go ahead and take all of our pieces with the exception of the top of the box, we'll save that for later, and start gluing everything together in box shape. And since these pieces are so small, I'm just going to clamp them together using my tabletop vise. Here is a little plastic piece I printed, which is going to serve as the back of the drawer I'm getting ready to build, and that will actually help keep the drawer closed. What I'm going to do is drop this little round magnet I picked up at Home Depot into the hole and super glue it in place. We'll then repeat the steps we did for the box to build the drawer. I had some scraps left over from earlier, so I just sent them to the joiner to take a little bit off them so they'll fit inside the box. I then also cut a very thin sheet of plywood to serve as the bottom of the drawer. With that, all of our pieces are now cut out and we can begin to glue them together as well. And here we are with both the box and the drawer. Now as you may observe, the drawer is much too large and long to fit into the box, but 
That is for a reason. That's because I want the drawer to fit as perfectly as possible. So what I'm going to do is sand it down until it does just that. And after a short while of sanding, both pieces fit together beautifully. And with that, we are now ready to cut down the length of the drawer to match the length of the box. Well, my stars, would you look at that? Now all that's left to do for the assembly of the box is cut out and glue on a face to the drawer and then glue on the top of the box that we've already have cut out. And here we are with everything glued together. You can see there is a little bit of a gap at the front of the drawer and that's actually deliberate because I do plan to sand this down quite a bit and without that gap we might not be able to grip to open the drawer at all. However, it is important to note you can increase or decrease the size of that gap by adjusting the screw inside the box. So I'm going to go ahead and start sanding everything down and once it's all even I'm going to take it over to the router table so I can start rounding off the edges. And here we are after the router in a decent amount of hand sanding. Super silky smooth. Now the reason why we put a magnet at the back of the drawer and a screw inside the box is so we can get a magnetic seal that helps hold the drawer in place. And let me just add I am so happy we left that little gap at the front of the drawer because the magnet's strong enough I don't know if I'd be able to open the box without it. Now we are finally ready to stain it. For stain I'll be using Jacobean 2750 because I love its dark rich color. And once the stain has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with a clear coat of polycrylic. Now here I have a thin piece of masonite that I cut out that allows the soldier's base plate to hang off one side, allowing the soldier himself to lay flat. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down to the bottom back of the drawer. Just like that. Then for one last finishing touch to help make the whole thing look a little bit more classy, I'm going to line the whole inside of the drawer with some green felt. Here I have some felt left over from my gecko's house and a little bit of felt glue, so let's get started. And that white PLA is sticking out a little bit too much for me, so I'm going to go ahead and sharpie it in while I'm at it. Oh, shiny! You know what? I really like how this turned out. Just like anything in life, it's not perfect, but I feel like it's close enough. And so with that, the last thing we need to do now is decide which soldier actually goes in here. I'm honestly not just playing this up for a bit. I have no idea which one to choose. It's probably going to change in five minutes, but for now, I think I'm going to go with the jungle paint job. I really like this guy. And so here we are at last, ready for a Monopoly game. Bang dong. The door! The door! The portal to the outside! Someone's at the door! Bang dong. Bang dong. Bang dong. No, get up for me! I'll just let myself... Monopoly. <laughs> well, hey, you guys won't mind if I joined in, would you? I mean... I do happen to have my own game piece on hand. Game piece? Custom game piece. Yeah, nothing too fancy, just a solid oak box that's magnetically sealed, felt lined, and that holds a one-of-a-kind lucky game piece that I've won over 26 Monopoly games with. <laughs> so what do you guys say? Is it cool if I uh, jump in? We're just a figment of your imagination. Ploop. Well, crap. That's definitely not good. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video and I left links for everything I used today down below in case you want to make your own game piece carrying case or print off your own space soldier or what have you. And actually on that note, would you guys like me to make a few other space soldiers in a few different positions so we have more of a complete set or is that not something you're into? Let me know down below. 
but hey thank you so much for you guys watching i hope you did enjoy this video and if you did please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and everyone i'll see you next time thanks for watching and please feel free to subscribe